Guys, you have no idea how much we tried. Daniela is a rock star just for how much she tried to make this work so that we could have both Facebook and Instagram going at the same time. So kudos to her. She is awesome. So hi, guys. Christine Dahl here from Fashion Angel Warrior. Thank you so very much for tuning in to our Facebook and Instagram Live. We do these every week, every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm super excited because we're doing a live interview with Daniela Jacques of Jacques Odyssey. She is one of our superstar clients. We've been working with her since 2017, and she has done some pretty awesome things, which is why I wanted to bring her on so that she can tell you all about what she's doing, how she did it, so that you guys can learn because it's all about collaborating, not competing, and growing our businesses together. So definitely don't forget to give us your comments, give us your hearts, give us your thumbs up. If you've got questions for Daniela, start typing them in. I'm going to definitely start asking her some questions um, to kind of get things going, and then we'll see where this whole thing takes us. So, Daniela, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's a yeah. pleasure. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes. So, for you guys who don't know me, uh, my name is Daniela Jacques. Um, so, I'm currently a business owner and also fashion designer for Jack's Odyssey. So you can, you know, if you've never seen Jack's Odyssey, just check out Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I'm there. <laughs> Everything. She's all over. Key, key yeah. point there. Uh, so um, social media is very important, as Christine just pointed out. And I'm a former scientist, too. So, you know, when I met Christine, I was a scientist. And a I'm from scientist, Mexico. by the way, which food. is very interesting, I think. <laughs> yes. Cheese. <laughs> cheese. Cheese. Specifically, I guess. Um, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, very crazy. But Christine has helped me through the, this whole time just um, doing the career switch. And she's done a magnificent job. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Jack's Odyssey and how it started. So Jack's is because my last name is Jacques, but I was from Mexico City. Um, so everyone would call me Jack's instead of Jacques. They wouldn't pronounce it Jacques like that. So then I thought it's easier to do J-A-X uh, and then Odyssey because the line is specifically for women who are go-getters, um, who are multifaceted too, and who love style, but also adventures and traveling. Um, so that's how the brand started. Um, awesome. Were, yeah. So Daniela is also one of our Fashion Startup Intensive students. And I think you've probably taken advantage of all of our services at this point. She is definitely a rock star. She's killing it. And she's a really hard worker, guys. It is not easy um, doing this, especially with she's had a lot of work issues, health obstacles, and she's battled through it. So she's going to tell us all about how she was able to grow her following from 2,000 to 22,000 followers in less than a year, how she averages about 130 comments per post, which is sick. I mean, guys, I know people that have $50,000, 50,000, 100,000 followers on Instagram, and they're not averaging 130 <laughs> comments per post, okay? We're going to talk about why she's not in a rush to launch her line, and the number one thing she learned from working with us at Fashion Angel Award. So definitely, definitely, if you've got questions, start typing them in. I'm going to start off with the first one. Daniela, how has working with Fashion Ninja Warrior helped your brand and helped you with Instagram? Um, so definitely helped me focus. I would say that's like um, <laughs> the specific word I want to use. Yeah. Um, when I first started, I was not nearly where I am at all. Like, Social media, I did not really use Instagram. I had it, but I didn't use it. Um, I was more of a Facebook person, and now, actually, I love Instagram a lot better. But, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But as totally. I said, I, wa um, I was a scientist, but I was um, searching to become a fashion designer. So, Christine, I found her as my mentor. And when it comes to social media, she completely emphasized the importance of it. Um, so the more you are, the more people know you, then, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to succeed as a designer, but it definitely doesn't hurt because, you know, if you have a celebrity, they will know you. If you launch a product, then they're most likely going to get it because they know you. So if they don't know you, then they'll be like, well, who's this Jack's Odyssey, right? But if you start to post either blogs or on Facebook or on Instagram, then people start to get to know what is your brand about. Um, so I think 
helping me focus on what direction and that social media is really important. Um, that was definitely something that I'm grateful with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Brand awareness is key. And I love the fact that you said it doesn't guarantee success. I think a lot of people think, oh, if I have a huge following on Instagram, it's guaranteed money in the bank, good to go. And that's not the case, but it definitely, definitely does help guys. Like you can use your Instagram following to drive traffic to your website. And there's so many different ways that you can do that. So I know that Daniela, we worked a lot specifically on Instagram strategy. Um, and we worked on your layout and your feed and different things. Was there one specific thing that you took away from the Instagram strategy sessions that you had with us? Like what was your biggest takeaways from those? Yeah. So, I mean, just so you guys know a little bit, I did mention that the brand is about women who like style and traveling too. So the clothes are going to be very functional, but also cool, you know, like um, something that you're comfortable with when you're traveling. So that's something that I thought about when setting up the Instagram. What can I share with people? And Christine kind of helped me with that because I didn't, first of all, I didn't even know what hashtags were. I didn't know how many <laughs> hashtags. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? I, love it. I mean, I love you would it. see it here and there, you know, hashtag LOL. I'm like, okay, if I use one hashtag, will, you know, 20 people see it or I don't know. I mean, that's something that I really had no clue. Then Christine basically told me, hey, Instagram allows you to use this many hashtags. Um, also, you have to have very cool content. I mean, there's something that you need to offer your audience to caption. I mean, because you only have literally a few seconds to get their attention. So oh, you yeah. need to have very clever caption. Um, something that she emphasized was call to action. So if yes. you ask them questions, I mean, make sure you're, you engage with them and then they will comment. And if they comment it, that means, you know, Instagram has this funny algorithm, um, which not all of us really understand it, but we kind of have an idea of things that can help us get it's more like the on unicorn. top of the chart. Yes. It's like Keep the, the, the unicorn. unicorn. Yes. Exactly. No one exactly yes. knows what it is or where it is. I know, but you know, me not being aware of that, you definitely helped me understand, okay, these are some of the things that you can use at least to get going. And, you know, it was really testing and seeing what, how the audience will respond to what I was posting. Um, another very important thing was pictures, right? When I first started, um, I think I really like raw content. So I will post a lot of behind the scenes, um, okay. which is fine to post behind the scenes, but you also emphasize me to post a little bit more editorial. So Instagram is like a magazine, right? So yes. if you want to entice your audience, you want to have pretty pictures. You don't have to have like amazing pictures all the time, but you don't need to, you know, it needs to flow nicely. Exactly. So that's something that you and I work on. And I think that was very helpful too. Um, yeah. Definitely. Be informative. Be informative too, right? Because if people are going to follow you, you, you got to give them a reason to follow you. So either you yes. make them laugh or you motivate them to do something or you give them outfit inspiration of the day or you show them places that they've never been to, which that's something that I love doing. So whenever I travel, I post, hey, guys, I'm here in Cambodia and check out the arts and crafts or check out the fabric that they're using here. And that's going to be very important for the Jack Odyssey line to like, I would love to work with artisans of the world and show that. But where are you going to show it? Well, social media is just like a great free platform to show those things. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love it. So now yeah. when did you first, first start using Instagram? Was it like in 2016-ish time? Yeah. So I started in 2016. But again, like, I barely touched it. Yeah. <laughs> So I honestly deleted some of those pictures because I feel like they don't even go with what I'm doing anymore. Yeah, yeah, which is good. I'm glad that you yeah. did that. <laughs> so you guys, if you have Instagram and you have some awkward pictures, then just go ahead and delete them. <laughs> because, yes. you know, <laughs> yeah. Clean up all that old stuff. 
Yeah, I probably definitely need to go back and clean up a lot of stuff in my own account as well. But I know that we started working together probably in 2017 on Instagram, 28, beginning of 2018 on Instagram. And your follower count was around 2,000 at the time. And oh, now oh it's up to 22,000. 22,000 guys in a year. Work That's hard. incredible. Okay, so we've got Work a question hard, from hard. Victoria. Yes. Daniela, what was the major change you did with your Instagram since meeting with Christine? Um, Victoria I mean, wants to know. You kind of yes. you kind of answered it a little bit, but I guess maybe yeah. she's asking for like one one major change. So let's talk about. I think the pictures, how, right? Go ahead, you you tell. Yeah, I mean, there is many things, right? Like we talk about, they have a good caption, so you don't just want to say hello and post a picture. Like have a good caption to captivate people, have nice pictures. Um, but also something that I started doing more is really understanding the analytics. So in 2016, I didn't post much. Then 2017, I started to post maybe twice a week. And that basically changed as I continued to develop the Instagram brand. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about how I post because I know we'll be talking about that later. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. But also, like I was mentioning, I used to post a lot more raw content in my feed now that switch so I'm doing more behind the scenes and stories or live and then yes I'm trying to keep my feet a little bit more clean so that's a really important key that you just mentioned and I want to highlight that for a minute so when she says when Danielle says she was posting raw pictures that means she was posting pictures of what she had for lunch today and her dog and her you know workout at the gym right but she might not necessarily be targeting fitness girls, let's just say. But Daniela likes to, fit, likes to work out, and she likes fitness. But maybe that's not necessarily her target market. But she knows that her audience likes to see kind of what she's doing. So she'll save that content, what she had for lunch or what she's eat, you know, doing for fitness or something. And she'll save that content for her stories because it doesn't really matter as much the picture quality and the content for your stories as much as it does that you have a really beautiful feed for your actual Instagram posting. So yes. I think that's really, really key to, um, distinction, distinction to make that a lot of times I'll post pictures of my baby. I'll post pictures of personal things right in my stories, but then I kind of keep my feed very clean, very neat, very much like a magazine editorial. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome. Great explanation. <laughs> yes. And now you also mentioned going back to another thing that you mentioned about the call to action. So I would say, and you can tell me what your thoughts are. I think the reason you're averaging 130 comments per post is because you are the queen of call to actions. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> every you. single, I, I literally think this guys, every single post she puts, there is a call to action. And it's not like, I think people have this connotation that call to actions have to be like salesy, like sign up now or click here, which yeah, there's, our, there's a lot of those kind of call to actions out there, but a call to action doesn't necessarily mean it has to be like that. It just, a call, the purpose of a call to action is getting someone to take action. So if you want them to comment, literally telling them, hey guys, comment below, what are your thoughts? Or, hey guys, you know, head over to my IGTV because I just started doing IGTV. Like it sounds silly that you have to tell people what to do, but at the end of the day, we actually want to be told what to do. Like as human beings, we have this weird, you know, psycho analysis, whatever going on psychology that subconsciously we need to be told what to do. Cause think about it, your entire life, you've been told what to do. You had parents <laughs> that told you what to do. Then you went to school and they told you what to do. Then you had a boss who told you what to do. Right. So we're kind of been trained subconsciously to have people tell us what to do and then kind of follow that. And so I think that you simply by doing these amazing call to actions, like, hey guys, this is my Valentine's Day outfit. What, what are you guys wearing for Valentine's Day? Comment below. Like just adding that little touch in there. Like, what do you think? Comment below, like a question and then comment below, like statement makes such a huge difference. And I think, I mean, you can tell me if you think otherwise, I think Daniela, that's why you're averaging 130 comments per post. <laughs> thanks <laughs> but yeah I mean as you're stating call to action crucial and thanks Christine for that tip because definitely you want to yes. get that audience engaged 
and going back and yes. forth. Yes, social media. Yes, social media is about being social, guys. I mean, mm. people forget that because it's so easy to send a quick message. It's so easy to send a heart or send a like. But we actually want to hear from you, right? That's why I keep telling you guys, like, Give me your comments, write things in the comments because we want to know, are you liking this live video right now? Talk, comment below. Tell me. Yes. Are you comment. It? How much do you love Let it? us know. Comment. <laughs> we want to hear from you. Don't be that crazy stalker. Um, we love you guys. We do these for you. So we need to know, are you enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? Because this helps me figure out what content to be posting on here for you guys. So comment below. Exactly. We want to hear from you. Okay. All right, let's go into a little bit more details about your Instagram. Do you know what your current reach and impressions are? Because I know a lot of people want to know that. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Do I had you to know? go into my analytics. No, I had to go into my analytics, but I know. Um, so okay. it's okay, about 10,000 reach. So that was for the okay. week and then over okay. 20,000 impressions. So okay. both are up. Uh, compared to last week. So you can check if you're up or down compared to the previous week. Yes. Yeah. So inside Instagram, in your insights section, it gives you analytics. And it won't compare mm -hmm. it. It won't give you like a spreadsheet, but it will at least compare it since the last week. So it will tell you where you're at now. Mm -hmm. And then it will tell you whether you're up or down compared to last week and by how many you're up or down. So that's a and really that's good if you reach have... and a really good impressions. Go ahead. And that's if you have a business profile. So just yes. for people to know. And if you're starting a fashion line or you're trying to start a fashion business, whether it's a wholesale boutique business, whatever it is, you're going to want to make your account a business profile so that mm -hmm. you can check all these analytics. And so that people yeah. can email you. I mean, there's so many, there's so many uh, reasons why you want to have a business account. Mm -hmm. okay, and awesome. even if you're We've an influencer... Yeah, even if you're an influencer, I mean, there's ways to make your profile a business. You don't, you don't have to currently be running a business, um, but you can sign right. up to have a business account. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matthew has a question. What or how do you, I think he's, he wants to know, what do you do to bring your Instagram followers to your website? Yeah. Is so, there anything you actively do? Yeah, so... Uh, just so you know, once you hit 10,000 followers, you usually have a link um, that you can use in your stories. Uh, before I had 10,000 followers, uh, Instagram allows you to have a link in your bio. Right. So if you guys don't know what your bio is, it's um, the words that you can put under your picture. And then you're allowed to put one website. Now, if you've been taking Christine classes, you will know that there is a way to link a bunch of websites so you can have that link and then people click on that link and it will take you to multiple websites or pages that you're running. Um, yes. But if you just want to have one, you can put it in there. And then once you hit 10K, you can actually put a link in your story and say, see below or swipe and then people can swipe and they immediately are taken to your website. So that's a really good advantage once you do reach 10,000 followers to have that swipe up option in the stories because it's just so quick. It's so quick. It's so easy. People don't have to click on anything. They just literally swipe up immediately. They're taken directly to your website. Now, you mm -hmm. also have a blog on your website, Daniela, correct? Yes. So if you visit my jacksodyssey.com website. Oh, and for those of you that know how to spell it, here you go. Jack's Odyssey. <laughs> I know it can be it's, hard, so let me show an Insta. Um, so jacksodyssey.com. Well, okay. Uh, J-A-X and then Odyssey. Yes, spell it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So J-A-X-O-D-Y-S-S-E-Y. -S -S -E so Jack's Odyssey. So yeah, I did my website on Shopify and then my blog is inside the website. Um, so that's a really good thing because you can have SEO uh, whenever you write a blog. And then, you know, let's say you're mentioning, oh, I went to Venice Beach, you know, which I have a blog about Venice Beach. Then if people are interested about what to wear in Venice Beach, they may search for that. And then they may find my website uh, because of that blog that I wrote. So blogs are very important, as Christine taught me. <laughs> yes. To drive people into your website. Yeah. Yes. And 
I'm sure you also post the blog on your Instagram too. Yeah, I do. So whenever I have a new blog, then I just either put it, you know, I advertise it however I can. So I'll put it on my feed. I may add a picture from that blog. Then I also add it to my stories and then just say, hey guys, check this out. Um, Another thing that I haven't mentioned yet is I've used IGTV. So again, don't just be focused on Instagram because your audience, you may be more of a YouTuber, who knows? Um, but you should also have an Instagram, right? However, that being said, use as many platforms as you can. So IGTV is one of them um, that I've started to use as well. So I don't only have videos on YouTube, but also on IGTV. And that's a cool platform that Instagram just made available. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, IGTV is just Instagram's kind of version of a TV station similar to YouTube, right? So it's like Instagram's YouTube version essentially so instagram Mm -hmm. has stories they have igtv and they have just the regular posting on your feed so there's three different opportunities for you to post things on instagram and danielle is using all of them if you're just starting out i recommend starting with just your feed getting used to that getting comfortable with that then you can move on to the stories once you're you're comfortable with that then you can move on to the igtv so don't get crazy i think you have to do all three right away take your time do what you can do and we're definitely here to help you. Okay, so next question, Daniela. How do you know what to post and when to post it? Do you have so any I didn't, strategy tips there? Yeah, I didn't always know what to post and when to post, so don't be discouraged, you guys. <laughs> Again, I started with 200 followers. Somehow it started to grow. Really getting to 1K was hard. Once I passed 1K, I feel like the next 5K was easier. <laughs> But anyways, uh, posting, um, again, it's all about testing. And you really need to understand your audience. The good thing about having a business page is you can see the analytics and where your audience is coming from. So you you can even see, like, what percent is female, what percent is male, the age, et cetera. So that gives you a better indication of, okay, what type of content would they like Now, I didn't just go with that because I obviously wanted to attract people of a certain age because my line is for women that are, you know, 25 to 40, right? So I wanted to make sure that I kept that age range and that I posted um, accordingly. Now, another thing is, um, and I didn't really catch up on this until later, was Mm -hmm. I used to live in Denver, so it was mountain time. And then I thought, okay, I should probably post when Mountain Time, Eastern Time, and Pacific are watching. So those are my three time zones that I try to make sure that they're watching. Um, Mm -hmm. But it varies by day. It's not as easy as you think. And it really depends on the content that you're posting. So for some people, it may work to post at noon. For other people, it may work better to post after work once everyone's out of work. So it depends. I mean, just, just test it if you're new at this. Start little by little and keep a chart. Record this day I posted at this time. This is how many likes and comments I had. You can have a spreadsheet and then just track it that way. That's a really good tip too. Yeah, I recommend doing a spreadsheet because, again, Instagram will give you some stats, but it's week by week, so they don't give you you know month over month or year over year. So keep some kind of a spreadsheet, keep track of things, see what times of day you're posting, what days of the week you're posting, when most of your people are on um, Instagram, and uh, try to capitalize off of that. If you got a lot of comments at 5 p.m. on a Sunday, maybe that's your day and time, right? And so try posting that stuff. If you got a lot of comments on one photo over another, try to decipher it. Was it because of the photo? Was it because of the caption? Was it because you used a really good call to action? You know, and then try to duplicate that process throughout the rest of your Instagram feed. Okay, cool. I'm loving it. Are you guys loving this? Let us know. We want to hear from you. Comment below. Send us thumbs up. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, send us your hearts, your thumbs up. We love it. Yes. Oh, one more thing I wanted to add to that is, um, you know, traveling. Yes. Whenever I travel, I've noticed that my posting times 
do change um and some posting times do better if i'm in california and I'm, and if like let's say i'm tagging california as a location against if for example i travel to new york and and tag new york as a location and that's another thing that you guys should really think about doing tag your location you don't need to specifically state oh i'm at this coffee place because who knows some creep may go say hi <laughs> right but... you don't want to cause any stalkers to come stalk you <laughs> yes <laughs> but you can say hey manhattan i'm here you know right exactly yeah. And that's really good for getting found on Instagram. So the geotagging, whether it's in stories or on your actual posts, is really good because people are constantly just surfing around, putting New York, New York, or putting downtown LA. And if your post happens to be hashtagged or geotagged with that location, your post could come up and they could find you. So it's just a really great way to get found on Instagram. Awesome. Yep. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, great. Let's talk about how much time you spend on Instagram per day. And I'm talking about just for your business, not <laughs> okay. not like for personal, like, oh, I just want to browse around. But like how much time you spend like posting and commenting and engaging for your business on Instagram per day, like on average? Uh, a Do you lot. have any idea? Um, but I would say definitely I spend about 15, 30 minutes in the morning. Okay. So when I wake up, make sure I catch up on comments. Okay. Um, and then throughout the day, if I have breaks, then I will comment throughout the day, um, especially after I post, because you want to make sure that you're engaging right after you post. And then at night. So if I will say total, maybe about two hours. Okay. And yeah. that's really not bad. I mean, if you're spending, let's say half an hour in the morning, maybe a couple other 15 minute slots, right? And then an hour to a half an hour at night or something like that. That's really not that bad guys. Um, yeah. And it, when you break it down into 15 minute increments and 30 minute increments here and there, it's not going to feel like two hours. And keep in mind, she's got 22,000 followers and 130 comments. To be commenting <gasps> I gotta keep on. commenting. So it's taking her a lot this. longer to reply to all those comments, right? So, and she's, she's not using, as far as I know, you're not using any bots. You're not doing, you don't have an outsourced any of your Instagram. You're doing it solely no. yourself, which is awesome. Yes. So a lot of people, when they get to a certain level on Instagram, start to outsource things, start to utilize bots to reply to things, which is mm -mm. good to a certain degree, but not good because you're taking away that personal touch, right? Again, social media is about being social. It's about creating relationships and it's hard to create a relationship if you just have a bot that says, Hey there, how are you today? Right. <laughs> you know, instead of really engaging. Yes, no, not a good idea. And just so you guys know, I know Christine had mentioned um, I had some health issues, so my hands were in really bad pain. Um, so during that time, I went home, went to see some doctors. And that's not only from being an Instagram, I promise. Uh, <laughs> as a oh, designer, no. you have to be kind, you to have to you. be sewing. Um, <laughs> yes. And as a business owner, too, I mean, you're on the computer. And then, you know, if you want to go and make an outfit, you need to be sewing again. Um, so there's multiple things that I was doing. But during that time, sometimes my hands were in so much pain that I asked my husband, hey, do me a favor if he was sitting right next to me. Please type this for me. And I will dictate him literally like, oh, yeah, answer this to her. Answer that to her. Um, so don't be afraid of, to ask for help. Um, I did, but I still continue to comment myself. But, you know, he was helping me type. Right, right. Yeah. Which is awesome and, again, speaks volumes to you, right? Her hands were hurting her. She was in pain, and yet she still found a way to comment on Instagram and do her posts and do all the things that she had to do, which is just awesome. Yes. Yeah. We love your hearts, guys. Okay, great. Yes. Victoria has a question. Let me see if I can read the whole thing here. How do you balance your time between social media slash content production versus designing product development and building your line? That's a really great question, Victoria. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're not there for social media. Social media is a tool to get you where you want to be. So if it starts getting too crazy, don't be afraid to take breaks. Um, at first I was posting maybe twice a week. Now I'm posting four times a week, but I do take my breaks. Um, I try not to post much on the weekends or be there so much on the weekends. Something important that I need to do, I, 
that that's like second priority you know you, you gotta make right. sure that if i have a call with a manufacturer or if i have a photo shoot or da 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 i that that's gonna be priority yeah definitely definitely don't let it over consume you guys or cause a lot of stress like yeah. yes it's great to post once a day but you haven't heard daniela doesn't even post once a day maybe it's once four days a week she doesn't do the weekends right so just do what you can do and try to commit to that. And then knowing that, okay, I'm going to commit to three days a week or whatever the commitment is. And knowing that it's flexible, it's a flexible commitment. So if you've got something coming up with your line, if you have a week of fittings that you have to attend to, if you've got a photo shoot, if you've got a launch coming up, you've got a trade show you're doing, those are all going to take priority over the Instagram. And if you can, try to get an intern to help you, right? Bring the intern along to the photo shoot. Have them do all the Instagram posting for you or at least taking the photos so that later mm -hmm. on you can go home and post them, right? So try to outsource and delegate as much as possible. Okay, Matthew wants to know if you use Hootsuite or you make it live, meaning do you use any kind of scheduling tools? No, I do not. Uh, recent, and I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I've done a lot of reading on Insta. Um, from what I found, Instagram doesn't like third parties posting for you. You're so, correct. no, I, yes. I do not use third parties to post. Yes, it's correct and true. I don't, I, I don't schedule any of my posts either for Instagram. I do schedule them for other social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but I specifically, specifically do not schedule them for Instagram. Um, I think that they know that you're having something, schedule it. And so they, according to their algorithm, kind of put your feed or put your post lower in the feed, right? So you're not going to yeah. get as much traction. Okay, mm -hmm. we're going to wrap up very soon, guys. So if you do have any last minute questions, let's get them in now. My question, I'm curious to know, is your husband, since we were talking about your husband, is your husband your photographer? <laughs> does he take all your photos does he take all your photos well he knows my best angle so <laughs> I better trust him he does take a lot of my pictures so if you if I'm in the picture my husband most likely took it however if he's not around then that's why tripods are for so I do have a lot of tripods my mom has taken pictures for me as well thank you mom if you're watching <laughs> and we love you if mom. I'm Love you, mom. Um, and, and if husband. I'm not in, and hubby too. Thank you, hubby. Yeah, for putting up with me. And if I'm not in the picture, um, I'm most likely to get. So I love okay. taking pictures of landscapes and everything that's travel related. And if I'm not in it, um, I probably took it. Okay, cool. And do you use a professional camera at all, or do you just shoot with your iPhone? You guys, being honest, I mostly take my iPhone everywhere. It's just easy. I travel quite a bit. So to be honest, I'm a bit lazy. I don't like carrying heavy cameras. However, that being said, I've, yes, I've used professional cameras as well. And I've done collabs with professional photographers too. So it just depends. Okay, cool. Uh, and I also have okay, a cool. GoPro. And I have a drone that we just purchased. So I'm excited to use the, the drone. I think that'll be really fun. Cool. Awesome. And do you use any specific editing apps or planning apps or apps to download the photos from your camera onto your phone? What are some of your favorite tools? Yeah. So again, I don't pre-plan and allow third parties to post for me. But there is an app that Christine recommended that I love and it's called Preview. So that helps yes. me outline my pictures and just see how they are all going to flow with each other. So there I can see colors, if they go well with each other or not. So preview is really good for that. And just for organization, I don't allow it to post for me. Um, I use Adobe Photoshoot, fo Photoshoot Photoshop. Um, that's great for yes. lighting. Um, I just really love it for lighting because it's the only app that's really taken my pictures from being super dark, almost you cannot use them to like, oh my gosh, you know, they, it transformed my picture. So the lighting is really good with that. Um, Lightroom, I use if I want to emphasize the colors or make them a little softer, a little darker. So Lightroom is great for color editing for me. 
but you can do other things there as well. Um, video trim I use if I want to keep my image portrait and if I'm not doing YouTube. And if you don't want advertisement or whatever, I think video trim is really good. Um, what was that one called, uh, Danielle? Video trim? Yeah. Video, video trim. trim. Okay. You broke up a little bit. Okay. And I, you, well, I mean, I don't use it as much anymore, but cut story was great. If you don't, if, but now Instagram's changed things, so you can do stories back to back. But in the past, you couldn't, it will just limit you to 13 or 15 seconds. So yes. cut story is really good to have just like the right amount of time for Instagram, Facebook, or other social media platforms. So those are the ones I use the most. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Any last minute questions for Daniela? We are so excited that you're with us, Daniela. I know. Thank I've you for a lot. inviting me. Yeah. yeah. We Any all learn together. Tips for startup designers. Yes. Any last minute tips for startup designers? Um, well, I mean, for everyone, I think sometimes and i'll say an example you know one person one time sent me a dm direct message on instagram and they were like how do you have so many comments like you must be purchasing some i'm like no it's not rocket science okay i'm gonna give you a tip for free <laughs> and that is engage you gotta engage if you don't engage you are not a superstar you're not a celebrity people are not just gonna follow you because, you know, you need to give them something. At the end of the day, this is very fun for me, but I'm posting for the audience. I want to make sure the audience is enjoying what, um, what I'm presenting to them. And exactly. engaging, again, this is a social platform. Um, if you're not commenting and replying to your comments, people are not going to care for you anymore, you know, it's, if, especially if you try to keep engaging with someone that you you really like and follow and then they don't really pay attention to you. You know, it, to me, it's very important to engage with people that comment. So I get not rocket science. If you want to have comments, then you better comment back. Yes. I think engaging is, is crucial. I agree. It's kind of like when you get a text message from somebody, you feel an obligation or at least you should feel an obligation to text that person back, right? It's common yes. courtesy. <laughs> So the same thing happens with social media, guys. When someone's commenting on something, they want to hear back from you. They want to get something back. They want to know that you're a real person, that you care, that you're there, right? It's kind of like if you were to comment on a celebrity's page, most likely you're probably not going to hear back from that person, right? So who wants to have that? No one wants to feel that way. No one wants to feel like they're being ignored. So make it social, get engaging, and I hope all of you have super successful Instagram growth like Daniela. So thank you so much, Daniela. It's been so fun having you here. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Definitely let us know in the comments below. We want to hear from you. Did you like this live? Do you like the interview style? Do you want us to interview other clients of ours? What do you guys want to know? We want to hear from you. So let us know. Also, don't forget to follow Daniela at Jack's Odyssey. It's J-A-X-O-D-Y-S-S-E-Y. -S -E -S -E on Instagram. Okay. Her website is jacksodyssey.com. I put a link in <laughs> the Instagram and the Facebook section description there. So definitely make sure you follow her. She will comment back if you comment. I will. Um, and also, okay. Yes. Don't, don't just like hold me to that because I may not reply to a hundred percent, but at least I'll do 80%. <laughs> she does her best guys. She does her best. I'll do my best. Yes. Yes. And if you're interested in working with us at Fashion Angel Warrior to help you grow your Instagram, just DM us on Instagram with your email address. We'll send you a quick email. We'll set up a 20 minute call so that we can go over your business and how we can best work together. We can do Instagram audit. We have a 30 day Instagram starter pack. If you're just getting set up and you want us to kind of handle the whole Instagram process for you. So there's many different ways that we can work together. So DM us. If you're on Facebook, private message us, PM us. I don't know why they're different, but whatever. PM, DM, contact us. Okay. Info at fashioninjawarrior.com and we will get back to you. Also, we've got an amazing masterclass coming up tomorrow. If you haven't signed up for this, you better sign up now. Spots are filling up fast. 
This training is all about how to drive traffic to your online store and boost sales once you're there. It is going to be crazy. We're going to give you over eight different ways to drive traffic to your website, how to utilize things like social media to drive traffic to your website, and then also over 10 different ways to actually boost the sales once people are actually on your website. So go to traffic.eventbrite.com and you can sign up for that training. It is literally worth over $400. We have a similar course to this for over $100, and we're offering it for only $29, guys, but there's very limited space. We're doing a beta woo, test woo. with this course. Yes, Daniela, sign up. So she's super excited. <laughs> uh, so join yeah. us tomorrow night. Literally, it's only $29, guys. It's the price of a dinner or less <laughs> than even a dinner, um, depending on where you're having dinner. Um, but we're doing a beta test, so I wanted to get feedback before we launch this course live on our website. So after this, it's going to go up in price. It's going to be over $100. So definitely, definitely make sure you check that out. Click the link in the bio on Instagram and on Facebook. Last but not least, we have our LA Manufacturing Tour coming up in less than two weeks. I'm super excited. We still have one spot left. So if you're in the LA area, <laughs> West Coast area, Definitely come on our tour with us. It's super fun. Daniela was there at the last one. She can okay. tell you how awesome it was. And we're super Amazing. excited. So go to lafashiontour2.eventbrite.com. And then next week, we'll be back with our Facebook and Instagram Live. And we'll be talking about seven ways to get organized in your business. So you definitely don't want to miss it. If you're on Instagram, this video will be deleted at the end of this broadcast. But if you're on Facebook... Or if you want to hop on over to our Facebook group in the Fearless Fashion Printer, we post all of our videos there. So come join our exclusive group. It's got lots of designers, lots of free business information, and lots of help for you guys. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Hope you enjoyed tonight's live. Don't forget to share this video. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, really quick, really quick. Oh, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> um, if you guys are watching and if you follow me, just – Send me a direct message and I'll follow you back if you were on this live. Um, actually, being followed by someone that has more followers actually can boost your Instagram too. So that's a great thing to have. Um, so why don't we do that? If you're watching, follow me, but awesome. send me a, so a direct is message. Doing a really, Danielle is giving you a really great um, offer here. So if you DM her and tell her that you are on this live, she will follow you back, which is awesome. Thank you so much, Daniela. Yes, please follow my Facebook too. Well, awesome. thank you guys. Thanks Yay. for joining. Ciao, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.